Blender offers a fantastic set of rigging tools that allow for highly customizable and sophisticated setups suitable for character animation. But what makes a good rig and what are the requirements of a real production? In this video, we'll explore four principles that can guide us to create better, more professional quality rigs. Even if you're not building rigs for a studio project with a big team, following these principles can help improve not just your rigging workflow, but make your animation process also much more efficient and more pleasant. So the first thing you have to ask before you start rigging a character for animation is how is this character designed to move and what specific technical challenges need to be addressed in order for this character to meet its requirements. Not every character moves the same, so if you're rigging an old professor, unless the storyboards indicate it, his legs likely won't need to do the splits, so any time you spend finessing that pose will likely be wasted. If you're rigging Spider-Man on the other hand, then you know that that area will need work. Now if you're creating a general purpose rig for everyone to use, then yes, you'll want to make the rig as flexible as possible, but keep in mind that no rig will be able to look perfect in every pose and from every angle. Even with a character as flexible as Spider-Man, his poses will still have a specific design to them set out by the character designer and animator. These poses not only tell the story, but reflect who the character is and how they move, and in a way that has a lot of appeal, which is one of the principles of animation. The job of a rigger is to allow the animators to accurately hit these poses set out by the designer, whether that's you or somebody else on the team. Prioritize the rig's ability to create these appealing poses, and don't waste time polishing areas that don't need it. Some characters are designed to be seen only from certain angles, especially with highly stylized or cartoony characters. Their movements would be much more restricted and specific, and so would require a very customized setup that can hit those design requirements. Focus on what a character needs to do. So if you're doing a background character that never talks, it may be sufficient to just add one or two simple expressions, which would then free up more time to focus on the main characters. So before you rig your character, Ensure you have a clear idea of the intentions for this character's design and make a priority list for the features that the animation team, or you, will need most in order to get the job done. The second thing you should be mindful of is the user experience of your rig. You can think of the rig as a mini piece of software. It takes input from the user through an interface and allows them to produce an output in the end, so in this case, an animation. You don't want the animator to be fighting the rig the whole time, especially when they have to use it for many hours every single day. It hinders productivity and just makes the whole animation process miserable. The easier you can make the animator's job, the more they'll thank you. One way to do this is to focus on simplicity. Now, oftentimes rigs can become extremely complex and end up with hundreds or thousands of controls in order to meet the production requirements. So it becomes especially important to organize these controls in a structured hierarchy and give the animator a few simple controls to create the broad movements. Afterwards, if necessary, they can go in and fine tune things with additional controls. For example, using just one control to let the animator create an appealing smile rather than being forced to use a handful. The brows, eyelids, and fingers can also benefit from controls that can move broad regions fast for common poses and movements, it's important to give the animator quick shortcuts that they can use for a rough block-in of sorts, like laying down the broad strokes. Having parent space switchers can save the animator time from working with constraints. And foot pivots help make complicated foot maneuvers a lot easier. Also, think about the visual organization of your controls. The rig is essentially a puppet, and the puppeteer needs to quickly be able to grab and move different parts by easily identifying the different controls. Organize things into layers that can be toggled on and off, and color code controls in a logical way that can help differentiate them. Same thing for the shapes, try to vary them logically and by group. For example, circles for FK controls and squares for tweaks. Make sure they are clearly visible and not intersecting in the mesh and that they're simple and don't clutter the viewport. Turn off controls that are specific and let the animator start with just the big important ones. They can later search through the layers for themselves and find the additional controls they need if they're not present, assuming your naming is helpful and logical. When they open the file, you don't want the rig to look like this. Keep it simple. If you know a bit of Python, designing toggles and buttons directly in the UI that complement the rig's functionality is also a huge plus. So take advantage of Blender's API to create intuitive elements. Also, if your face rig looks like this, Stop it. Get some help. I assure you, no animator on this planet wants to interact with a spreadsheet. So if you can help it, try to put controls directly on top of the part of the model that they move. It's just much more intuitive and easier to use. Pickers are great too, just as long as there's a visual way to select things without searching through a list. 
So in summary, focus on a good user experience with your rig in order to bolster the animator's productivity. Next, we have performance. This also crosses into the user experience as well, but I wanted to make this a separate point on its own to go into some of the technical details a bit more. It goes without saying that having a very slow and clunky rig is not ideal and will hinder productivity. Having the ability to get quick feedback on your animation is extremely helpful, though not always possible. I've personally worked in scenes that you could not even scrub in the timeline, let alone have playback. In those cases, you have no choice but to just do viewport renders each time you want to see how your animation is going. So sometimes it can be unavoidable, and your rig's performance can be impacted by other various elements in a heavy scene. Rig functionality of course takes precedent over performance, but with that being said, here's a few tips you can try and implement to help alleviate this problem just a little bit. First, disable unnecessary modifiers in the viewport preview. The modifier stack is evaluated on each frame and each modifier is calculated on top of the previous. If you need certain modifiers enabled in the viewport, ensure they come before subdivision. The subsurf modifier as a general rule should always be at the bottom of the stack. Number two, if your base mesh is too low resolution for the animator to work with and requires the subdiv to be enabled, consider just applying the modifier and subdividing the base mesh. You can still leave a copy of the original mesh if you wish and just leave it disabled, but having the subdivision applied will drastically improve performance because calculating subdivision is very costly on the CPU and usually causes the most amount of slowdown. You can enable GPU subdivision in the settings to try and help improve performance a little bit. And number three, you can opt for the tried and true method of adding a proxy mesh that the animator can enable. A proxy mesh is simply a substitute mesh that's stripped down of its features or lower resolution that's swapped in to try and improve the viewport performance. An easy way is to break up your mesh into pieces and directly parent those pieces to the deformed bones of your rig instead of using an armature modifier. You can also use primitive shapes that roughly encompass the same mass and shape of the character. The last principle I want to cover is automation. In production, automation and scripting is absolutely essential. The complexity of rigs coupled with tight deadlines makes it impossible to try and do everything manually. So scripting allows you not only to be more efficient in your workflow by speeding up monotonous tasks, but also to apply a consistent standard to everything that you're doing. When working with biped characters of similar proportion, for example, it makes no sense to rig all of them from scratch. So applying a standardized template to all of them is really a no brainer and it keeps things familiar for animators who hop between working on different characters. Blender comes with a built-in auto rigger called Rigify, which lets you generate complex rig setups from simple bone chains, which are referred to as meta rigs. You don't have to know scripting to learn how to use Rigify, but it gives you much more control and ability to customize your result. There are other tools and add-ons available as well, like Cloud Rig from the Blender Studio, which is kind of like a modified extended version of Rigify. If you're working on a personal project or a very small amount of characters, you can of course do things manually without automation, but I'd recommend to dabble in both Python and the Blender API bit by bit, kind of as you go, because it really opens up the door for you to improve efficiency in your work process in small but pretty significant ways. For example, if you want to rename all of your vertex groups, or you want to add a driver to a group of specific bones, or you add small modifications each time you regenerate your Rigify rig. Eventually, once you build up enough knowledge, you can build your own tools to suit your workflow style and your personalized needs. For larger teams, automation and custom tooling allows everyone to have a standardized process that's consistent across the production. Every rigging artist is able to contribute in a way that's in line with the rest of the team and fits seamlessly into the pipeline. So in summary, what makes a rig production ready? It should suit the design intentions of the character and the requirements for animation. It should be user-friendly and as easy as possible for the animators to use. It should be as optimized for performance as can be achieved for faster feedback. And it should ideally use automation in order to be consistent with other rigs and be easier to reproduce or make changes to. If you'd like to learn more, subscribe to our newsletter to get updates about our upcoming comprehensive Blender rigging course which offers hours of lessons about every aspect of Blender's rigging process, as well as assets and an exclusive set of tools. Also subscribe to our channel for free tutorials and informational videos. Thanks for watching.